This is a Tartless Pro V1. It's an excellent golf ball. It's the most used ball on tour by a mile. It goes a long way off the tee. It stops nice and quickly when you hit it into the green and it feels nice and soft when you're chipping and putting. Basically, it's everything you can want from a golf ball. The only downside to this golf ball is that it costs quite a lot of money. Uh, the RRP is, I think, £52 for a dozen. Um, and I don't know anyone actually pays that, but even if you shop around, you're likely to be paying between 40 and about 43, 44 pounds for a box of these. So that's quite a lot of money. Now this is a Nike Resin Tour Platinum. I think I've got that right. Um, it claims to do all exactly the same things as a Pro V, so you know, long for tee, good spin to control it into greens, great feel, etc, etc. Uh, I don't think any tour pros use this, maybe a few, but um, probably not because Nike have actually stopped making these golf balls. But quite a few tour pros used to use them when they were being made. So Jason Day, Rory McIlroy, Brooks Kepka, loads of others used to use this ball. And I'm pretty certain that it's been used to win majors. I think last time Rory won the Open, he was using this ball or the previous version of it. So obviously it's a pretty good golf ball. And even though they've stopped making these, you can still get them. I bought a dozen at a club just down the road from me this morning. You can get them quite a few places online. Um, and by all accounts, there are you know hundreds, thousands of boxes still out there to be bought. And the interesting thing is that now they've been discontinued, you can pick up a box of these for 20 quid, even less if you buy a few. So I just looked online and you can get, if you buy six boxes, they work out 17 pounds 95 for a box. So obviously, you know, less than half the price of Pro V's. So I thought it'd be interesting really to test, is there much difference between this Nike Resin Platinum and this Titleist Pro V1? So let's go to the golf club and find out. Okay, so over the last week or so, I've been doing loads of chipping, putting, and pitching practice, and I've been switching between the two balls to see if I can notice any difference in terms of the feel or the way that they react when you hit them into the greens. And you can't. I'm sure if I was comparing a Pro V1 or the Nike ball to a kind of budget golf ball, you would notice quite a big difference both in the feel and the way they react on the greens. But these are two premium balls. You know, the Nike ball is basically their version of a Pro V1. So they also do a Nike Tour Resin Black, which is their version of the Pro V1X. But yeah, this Pro V1 and the Platinum, they're basically trying to do the same thing. So feel-wise, no difference. Um, but obviously feel is only part of the puzzle. So I'm gonna go and hit some balls on the launch monitor and actually get some numbers to see how they're performing. So I'm gonna hit balls with my sand wedge, seven iron and driver on the GC2, uh, get all the data and then we'll have a look. I've also asked one of the PGA pros at my club, Sam Beckett, to hit the balls as well, just to make the test a little bit more thorough and arguably a little bit more reliable with his ball striking compared to mine. Say hello, Sam. Hello. So feel-wise? Feel, similar, pretty yeah. much the same. If I scrubbed out the name and number. Yeah, you wouldn't know. Yeah. 
Let's have a look at the numbers. Just before I go into that, one thing that was quite interesting is that before I gave Sam the two balls and got him to hit some pitch shots and chip shots and putts and those kind of things, he was 100% adamant that he would feel a huge difference between the two balls. But as you saw, once he had played the shots, he's found that wasn't the case, same as I did. Now, I can't guarantee that you won't feel a big difference. I mean, feel, I guess, is quite a personal thing, but that's two of us who couldn't really feel a lot of difference between the two balls. Anyway, that's enough chat about what balls feel like. Let's have a look at some numbers. I'll put some screenshots from the GC2 up so you can have a look at the numbers yourself. So we'll look at driver first. Sam was carrying the Pro V about 255 yards pretty consistently with his driver and spinning it about 3000 revs per minute, which is pretty high for a driver. He carried the Nike about a yard further, um, but with a little bit less spin, so we've got more total distance out of it. But even then, we're only talking like a yard or two. It's not something that actually you would notice out on the golf course. I carried the Pro V about 250 on average with my driver. I had a wider range uh, than Sam's. So my shortest drive carried 242, and my longest was 257. But obviously that's down to the way I'm hitting it, not the ball itself. I mean, I'm using the same ball there. It hasn't changed between the shot that went 242 in the air and the shot that went 257. That's 15 yards, same golf ball, same golf club. The only thing that's changed is the way I've hit it. I was spinning the Pro V at 2600, which again is slightly high for a driver. The Nike ball I carried 257 on average, so seven yards longer on average than the Pro V. But again, I had quite a big range. So my shortest drive with the Nike ball carried 244 and my longest 263. But the spin was down to 2000 on average, which is much more of an optimum number for a driver spin. Okay, let's have a look at the mid irons. So Sam carried the Pro V 169 yards on average with his seven iron, uh, spinning at 5,300. He carried the Nike six yards longer, so 175, spinning at 5,000. So a bit more carry, slightly less spin. For me, the carry distances were almost the same, so 162 with the Pro V, 163 with the Nike. Again, slightly lower spin with the Nike ball, so that's something to think about. You could argue that you therefore get a little bit less stop on the green with the Nike ball. I mean, again, we're not talking huge numbers, and so much of it will be down to strikes, but it's something to think about. And finally, looking at the numbers with uh, sand wedges. Sand wedges? sand wedges. Sam was hitting his sand wedge about 97, 98 yards with the Pro V spinning at about 10,000 and with the Nike ball he was carrying it slightly shorter by only by a yard or two, 96, spinning at 9,500 so again slightly lower spin. I was carrying the Pro V between 97 and 100 with 10,300 rpm of spin. The Nike had carried about 95 yards with 9,300 rpms of spin. So for me, the Nike ball went a little bit further, particularly with the driver, but spun a little bit less. But like I said before, we are talking quite small differences, the kind that from one shot to the next, I just wouldn't really be able to tell because with each ball, the much bigger difference came down to how I hit it. And that would be the same out on the golf course. So I've had the Nike ball in play for the last three weeks. I thought, you know, I've bought that box, I might as well give it a proper test. And I haven't noticed any tangible difference between that and a Pro V, which I've been using for well, a couple of years really, with a short break where I tried out Chrome Softs. The only big difference I have noticed is that the Nike ball is definitely more durable. So I tend to find that a Pro V, certainly after 18 holes, but sometimes after sort of 12 holes, it's really starting to get quite chewed up. Whereas a Nike ball, I mean, again, it depends on what's happening with it. If you bang it off eight paths and nine trees and hit loads of bunker shots and blade about six wedges, any ball's gonna get quite chewed up. But the Nike ball definitely fares better after sort of 18 holes than the Pro V. So I've had some great rounds with the Nike ball. I shot a 72, which was my best ever competition round using it last week. I shot 72 last night in a singles match using it. And I've also had some crap rounds, but they would have been exactly the same scores, I think, if I've been using a Pro V. So for me, similar feel, pretty similar performance, less than half the price. It was a no brainer really. So I've bought six boxes of night balls which will hopefully see me through at least the next couple of weeks. 
So for me, it was a no-brainer, but that's not necessarily going to be the same for you. You might decide that actually that bit of extra spin that we seem to get with the Pro-V is definitely worth the extra money. You might just have played it for years and decide there's no reason for you to change. And that's absolutely fine. I'm not here to tell you what ball you should or shouldn't play. I just found that there was so little difference for me, I couldn't really justify paying more than double the price for the Pro-Vs. I mean, if you want to save some money on golf balls, as you can see, for the two of us, there was no difference really between the Nike ball, which you can get for 17 quid a box, and the Pro-V, which is likely to cost you 40, 44 quid or whatever. So I'm gonna leave it there. If you've liked the video, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, then that would be fantastic if you wouldn't mind doing that. And for everyone asking about my practice schedule video, I am working on it. I did say that it would take me ages, and it is taking ages. I'm going away next week, nothing to do with golf, so that's obviously gonna be a further delay, but leave it with me. I promise I'll get to it. I half promise it'll be worth the wait. But yeah, just make sure you're subscribed and follow me on Twitter. Obviously, I'll let you know as soon as that video is up. Oh no. All right, am I in the shot? I can't be in the shot. That's okay. <laughs> See you in the future.